Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you. My name is uh, Lloyd Cocker. I just wanted to thank you this evening. And I just want to welcome you to Breaking Bread. This is the show where we dissect God's Word. We take the Word of God and just feed on it. Amen. I just want to thank everyone that is able to join me this evening. And I'll just give it a few, uh, uh, just a few seconds here so that we can have everyone join in. But uh, I just want to take this time to just thank God and, and just praise Him and, and give Him all the glory, God, all the honor. God is so good. You know, I'm grateful to be alive. And, you know, um, just grateful for the Word of God. And this evening, you know, we're going to dig into God's Word, and we're going to feed on it. We're going to drink the... It's going gonna, it's gonna, it, it's gonna to refresh our souls. We're going to drink the Word. We're going to feed on it. Amen. And like I said earlier, I'm just going to uh, uh, introduce myself again. My name is Lloyd Cocker with Gospeler Ministries. We're located at 2078 North Liberty Street, Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, our services are, are on Sundays at uh, 1230, and you're welcome to join us anytime. Amen? And we would love to have you, so please. But tonight, you know, this evening, I just wanted to, to, to just do a quick recap on, on, on what we have been talking about. You know, this is the show where we just take God's Word and, and just... Uh, uh, just, you know, uh, dig in and, and get the meat, get the, the, the refreshment, the drink from it. You know, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that the words out of a man's mouth are as deep waters. The words out of a man's mouth are as deep waters. And the words that came out of the mouth of, of Jesus Christ are deep waters. Amen. These proverbs, it's deep waters. But it also says that the man of understanding will draw it out. That means these words have, they are like parables at times. They're, you know, Jesus spoke in parables. He spoke in, in, in enigmas. That means you have to uh, 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 dig deep and draw the refreshment out of it. Draw the, you know, a man of understanding will, will, will satisfy his soul with this word. Amen. And this is what we're going to do this evening. You know, um, I just wanted to just give a quick re recap on what we've been talking about. You know, in the Bible, it says that um, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. And I always like to say that we cannot have life just eating physical food alone, but we have life by every word 
by living the word of God, believing the word of God. Amen? That's how we have true life. Amen? By feeding on the word of God. And we've talked about the word of God being uh, more valuable than, than silver and gold. We talk about the word being uh, uh, food. We talk about the word being uh, even riches, you know. It says in, in, the, uh, in the book of, of Job 28, it talks about all these things cannot compare to the value of God's word, God's wisdom. Amen. And we need to collect. We need to, we need to make sure we, we are, 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 are storing these treasures in our hearts. Amen. And last week, we talked about the word of God being water. You know, in the book of Proverbs, it says, As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Ooh, and, 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 and you know how good it is to, when you are thirsty, when you are so thirsty and you get that glass of cold water, it, it, it quenches your thirst. Well, that's what God's word, that's what the good news does for our souls. Amen. And you know, uh, a, a good friend of mine the other day told me, he said, he said even when he was uh, 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 in the military, he said one of his commanders told him that the moment you wait until your body gets so thirsty, he said that it's too late, it's not healthy, but you have to keep your body hydrated all the time so that it doesn't get to that point where it's, 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 it's you know, hungry or thirsty for water. Amen? So we have to keep the word of God always going, hydrating the soul, so that it doesn't get to that point where it is, you know, it, it, it is now reaching and, and seeking that refreshment. Amen? So this evening, I tell you, is going to be an exciting time together in the word as we dig in, you know, as we talk about the water being refreshing to our souls, but also water is cleansing. It cleanses us. You know, Jesus washed the disciples' feet. He also said that he will sanctify us and wash the church with the word, with water from, by the word. Amen. So the word of God even washes, it washes, it cleanses us. Amen. It cleanses us. It renews our mind, our thinking. So there's so many things. And, and in that same area, when we dig in today, I want to talk about how God's word is used to just strengthen us. Amen. To strengthen us. One thing I want to show you and I want to speak is whenever, the, you know, whenever the divine favor, whenever God's favor is upon you, upon anyone, to receive a special grace or to accept their calling or the vocation that God has given you, he gives you a special gift. He gives you the Holy Spirit so that you can accomplish that task. Amen. Whenever God has chosen you for a specific vocation or for a specific work, for a specific calling, he gives you, he gives you the actual, you know, the, 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 the spirit, the gifts that is needed to fulfill the task at hand. Amen. And so this evening, I really want to uh, pinpoint someone and we're going to dig in because I want to, you know, we don't hear too much about him in the Bible. But I want, to, I want us to discuss Joseph. Joseph, amen, the husband of Mary, the foster father of Jesus Christ, amen. Because, you know, we always hear about Mary, we hear about jo uh, uh, Jesus, but not much about Joseph, Amen. And so this evening, um, I want us to, to, to really dissect the life of, of Joseph because it's so powerful when we really take a look at 
uh, 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 um, the grace that was upon his life. Amen. When we look at the grace that was upon his life, you know, Joseph was uh, uh, um, along the lines, ancestral lines of David. Amen. And when you look at his life, for him to be chosen to be the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the earthly father, you know, there was a special grace upon him because there was even a point where it talked about how he wanted to put away Mary because she was with child. So think about the, 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 the grace that was upon his life, that all this situation that was happening, that he was able to handle, he was able to handle the position, the vocation that God had given him. Amen. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna dissect this uh, 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 um, tonight because also it said Joseph was a carpenter. He was a carpenter he, by trade. He was a carpenter, and we're gonna get. We're going to dig deeper into what that word truly means. Amen? Because he taught Jesus also to be a carpenter. Whoo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He, he taught his son to be a carpenter by trade. Amen? So when you look at uh, 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 Joseph, he, he was the son of David, and so he can claim a royal and also a priestly descendant from the line of David. Amen? And when you look at him also, he says that uh, he followed that trade of a carpenter and he taught Jesus how to use wood and nails. He, touches, he taught Jesus how to use wood and nails. And you know there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes 12. Verse 11. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 11. Now think about this. Joseph was a carpenter. Amen? And he taught his son, Jesus, to be a carpenter. And I keep repeating this because I want you guys to get it. And now when you look at Ecclesiastes 12, verse 11, it says, The words of the wise are as goads. And as nails fasten, they are like nails hammered home, holding life together. They are given by God, the one shepherd. Who take a look at that now. It says, they are like nails. The words of the wise are as nails. The word, this is the, the, the message translation reads like that. But when you read the, the King James Version, it says, the words of the wise are as goads. And as nails fastened by the masters of assembly, which are given from one shepherd. So, a, the carpenter we're going to focus on is the spiritual meaning behind that trade. Amen? Because the carpenter, are, they use, it says the, the nails, they work with wood and nails. And it says the word of the wise are as nails. Amen? So, when you look at that word carpenter, carpenters work with trees. Ooh, I, I hope you guys hear me because I'm going to repeat that. Carpenters work with trees. They work with trees because they know in that trade, they will have to know which trees to use for building. Amen? Ooh, and I'm going to give you guys a, uh, a, a scripture in the book of Psalms 1. It says, it says, when we meditate on the word, on the law, day and night, we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. When we meditate on the word, day and night, we shall be like a tree. Amen. And carpenters work with trees amen they work with trees and 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 there's a there's a story there's a story 
that, um, that I want to tell you about because for Joseph, the carpenters were builders. They were, it, it's a very prophetic message. And I want you to look at this now with a prophetic eyes, amen? Because the carpenters knew which trees to build, amen? And when Jesus, he was a carpenter also. And what did he do? He used 12 trees. He picked 12 trees to build his kingdom here on earth, amen? He used 12 trees, 12 disciples to build his kingdom here on earth. Amen. And there's a story even of a man that was blind. And I'm going to get into details with this. That he said he was blind and Jesus took him out of the city. And he, he spit in his hand and he wiped his eyes. And he said, what do you see? He said, I see man walking as trees. Ooh, and Jesus made his eyes too good. Amen. He, 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 he made him into a carpenter. Amen. But he had to put his eyes back and said, how do, you, how, do you, how do you see now? And he said, I see clearly. So this, this evening, I want to dig in to why Joseph was a carpenter. And also he taught Jesus as a carpenter. This is the son of God. Amen. He said Jesus was obedient to his parents at a young age. Amen. And, and, and this is a parent that, these were parents that they understood the, the, the law, they understood the word, they worshiped, they, they went on, uh, 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 they did accordingly to what God prescribed to them. Amen? So we're going to, uh, I'm trying not to take too long, but there's a scripture that I want to read, and this is in Mark 8, Mark 8, chapter 22 through 29. Mark 8, chapter 22 through 29. It says, they arrived at Bethsaida. Some people brought a sightless man and begged Jesus to give him healing. Touch. Taking him by the hand, he led him out of the village. He put spit in the man's eyes, laid hands on him, and asked, do you see anything? He looked up. He said, I see men, they look like walking trees. Amen. Who? He said, I see men, and they look like trees walking. And so Jesus laid, his, uh, uh, laid hands on his eyes again. The man looked hard and realized that he had recovered perfect sight. Saw everything in bright 2020 focus. Jesus sent him straight home, telling him, Do not, don't enter the village. So I'm going to give you a, a, a background on this. And, um, and, and when you look at this same scripture, you see this man was blind. Amen. He couldn't see. And if you read earlier this verse, Jesus was rebuking his disciples why they weren't able to see spiritually. They were talking about physical bread. The, you know, he was rebuking him. He said, are your hearts hardened? Can't you see when I fed the loaves? But he was, he was rebuking him about, uh, 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 um, you know, not being able to see uh, spiritually, not having those prophetic eyes. So right after that, then this man who was blind, Jesus opened his eyes. But when he opened his eyes, there was a little, he went a little bit further. Amen. For us to catch that this man actually see other humans as trees. Amen? Like the carpenter that uses the trees to build. That uses the wood to build. Amen? Because if you kept going further in that same uh, 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 um, um, ch uh, chapter. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read that in the, in, in the King James. He says... He took the, the blind man out of the, out of the town, and when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. And after that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up, and his, he was restored, and he saw men clearly. And he says, and he sent him away. Uh, to his house, saying, Neither go into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. But then look at this. 
if you keep going further, Jesus asked his disciples, he says, who do people say I am? Who do people say I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, some say Elias, and others, one of the prophets. And then Jesus turned around again and says, and he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Who do you say I am? Talking to the disciples. And then Peter, it says, Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ. Now, this is in Mark, but when you look at the book of Luke, he turned to Peter and said, he said, Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Amen? So in order for Peter to see that, God had to open his eyes. And the moment he opened his eyes, he knew who Jesus was. He said, you are the Christ. And then Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. And even he went further and he said, upon that revelation, I will build my church. Amen. So the church is being built when God opens our eyes. We have to have that prophetic eyes. Amen. You know when Nehemiah, I, I want to take you to another story. It's in the book of uh, 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 um, um, Nehemiah. You know, when Nehemiah was going back, he said Jerusalem was in ruins. You know, he was looking at all the, 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 the gates and the walls had been destroyed by fire. And he had a burden to go back and build Jerusalem, rebuild. So he wrote, he wrote, he says, uh, 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 he wrote a letter to the king. And this is in um, Nehemiah 2, verse 8. He wrote a letter to the king in uh, Nehemiah 2, verse 8. Amen. That's, uh, uh, if, we, if, if, if we can look at that in Nehemiah 2, verse 8, it says, it says, he wrote a letter, a letter unto Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may what? Give me timber to make beams. Now, I want to explain this to you. Asaph, he wrote a letter to the king for Asaph. Asaph was actually a keeper. He was the keeper of the royal forest. He kept the trees. He was the keeper of paradise. Amen. And he also, he was a psalmist. He was a psalmist. He wrote Psalm 50 and also Psalm 73 up to uh, 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 83 in the, uh, in the Bible. He was a psalmist. Amen. But you know something too? Asaph had prophetic eyes. He was a seer. He was a seer. So when Nehemiah was building, rebuilding Jerusalem, he said he only wanted, As he wanted the timber that Asaph will provide. The wood that Asaph will provide. You know, Asaph was also a carpenter. Amen? And he, uh, read that. It says, and a letter unto Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make the beams for the gates of the palace, which appertain to the house, for the wall of the city, for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to the hand of my God upon me. Asaph, he said, why did he request the timber? Because Asaph was the keeper of the royal forest, amen? He knew exactly which wood, which tree to pick, to build. Just like Jesus knew which trees. He prayed and he picked 12 trees, amen? And build, and built his kingdom here, amen? God is building his church and he's using the prophetic eyes, amen? I hope you guys uh, 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 understand what I'm, uh, I'm, I'm speaking this evening because it's so powerful, amen? And we tend to overlook certain things, but as we dig in, we dig in, we dig into the word, we uncover the mysteries of God's word. We uncover the mystery. It says, the, the, you know, there's a scripture that says it is glory for, for, uh, uh, for God to, to, to hide a matter. 
but it's the glory for kings to search it out. Amen? It is for us to search out and, 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 and get the truth and the meaning behind God's word. Amen? And Asaph was, was uh, uh, he said, I can't, the, the only way I'm going to build is by using the timber, the timber that Asaph will provide to make the big, the gates, the beams, everything. I mean, even uh, 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 the wall of the city. Amen. So thank you, Lord. You know, I just wanted to, I, 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 you know, we can get much deeper into this. And I pray that the Lord opens your heart to get even deeper, you know, because the Bible talks about trees a lot. You know, it says a good tree produces good fruit. Amen. The Bible's talking, but he's not always talking about, you have to know that he's talking about the human, you know, because we are trees. Amen. We're all trees. And we ought to be the tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen. That brings forth its fruits in its season. And our leaves shall not wither. And whatsoever we do shall prosper. And how does that happen? By meditating on God's word. Amen. By meditating on God's word. By chewing God's word. By feeding on God's word. Amen. By feeding on God's word. So this evening, uh, we, we're going to have to do a continuation on this and, 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 and just dig a little bit deeper because when we're talking about that, 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 that carpentry, you see it throughout the Bible. You know, God sent builders. Even Noah, he built the ark. Amen? So... This evening, before we leave, I just want to lead us into saying the Lord's Prayer, and we will close. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I want you to always remember, forgive, forgive, amen, so that our sins, our trespasses will be forgiven. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storms. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Thank you for joining me this evening, and I hope you have a blessed, blessed week. See you next time. In Jesus' name. Do you have a business or product? Are you looking to advertise, maybe to get the word out to thousands of people on a daily? You should consider the Inspired Network. We have affordable packages that can assist you at getting the word out about your product or business. Call us today at 866-804-6774. Are you a frustrated leader trying to figure out how to get your media ministry to the next level? Maybe you don't even know the equipment to buy. You want to do it, but you're struggling to do it right. You've got a group of people that are willing to learn, but no one to teach them. Let me offer you what is called the Media Camp. For one day and a half, Friday and Saturday morning, your team will come sit down with the top staff from the Inspired Network and will teach them production from streaming and editing to the Ministry of Media Production. They will go from the classroom to hands-on training. If you're ready for your media ministry to be the best in town, then go to www.mediatraining.us and sign up today. Or call us today at 904-604-8448. Remember, we have limited space for this type of hands-on, one-on-one personal training. Are you a pastor trying to survive the new wave of change? Church has changed from beautiful Gothic cathedrals and mega church auditoriums to studio-style virtual church? You can do church, but not with an expensive location and exorbitant overhead. Are you clueless about how to do it? 
Do you want to know how to put on the production? Let us at the Inspired Network help make your virtual services professional and viral online. Let us do it all for you. Tape it in our studio for affordable rates. We help you broadcast your message on Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram. Weeks on your own page. Let us help make your message. Virtual call us today. 1-866-804-6774. Hi, Jacksonville. My name is Michelle Holmes with SVR Realty. I am your home buying and selling specialist in the Jacksonville area. I can help anyone, military included, buy a home, sell one quickly. If you have any questions on your home value, please reach out to me for a free home evaluation. Do you need help with your VA loan benefit? My assistance? Call me, Michelle Holmes. You're watching the Inspired Network, and maybe you're watching us on social media. Immediately go to your Roku device, press Add Channel, and download us today.